Heroes with yet another series of great hot rock star interviews here. And tonight we got Quiet Ride, who were in town uh, on a comeback tour a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we got a brand new band here, sort of. We got uh, Carlos Cavasso, and you can see uh, Kevin Dubrow there on the left. And there's a couple of new members. Carlos, who are the new members? Tell us all about them. Uh, we got Bobby Rondinelli, uh, formerly of Richie Blackmore's Rainbow on drums. Ta da! Here he is. <laughs> And we've got the uh, incomparable Kenny Hillary on bass from uh, L.A. bands. Nobody real big, but uh, he was the biggest guy in the band. The other guys were dwarves, so he had to, he had to leave. A couple classic guys. Okay, a lot has happened uh, with Quiet Riot since, uh, oh, I guess since about 88 or 89. Um, uh, j basically, just to recap, after your, your third album, Kevin left the band, then a, c a couple other guys came in. Now they're gone. These guys are back. Kevin's back. So what exactly happened and what brought Quiet Riot back now? Uh, well, the old, the original band had bad management, and a lot of things were turned the whole organization sort of sour, uh, business-wise. You know, we had a lot of things that led to the breakup of the band. But now, you know, we're a free agent, and uh, we're doing things the way we want to do it. And you know, if these people would just listen to us and do the things what, what we want to do, like the first time we had more say so on. That's our biggest successful album too. You know, so now I think we're happier. I mean, uh, we know what we want more in the record deal, so we're going to take our time, you know, shopping for it. So was there ever actually a breakup, or did you just take the time to reorganize? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was definitely actually a breakup, sure. And uh, it was for the better, to be honest with you. Okay, I think of a band like... I'm sorry? You took the ring back. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Okay. <laughs> now, I heard, I've been reading in rock magazines, you do have a new album out, but it's out only in South America. What's the deal behind that? No, there is no new record out. We're uh, currently did some demos for uh, CBS and... Uh, it's possibly we may be doing something with them. We don't know. We're going to shop around and see who gives us the best deal. And you know, we've been writing enough material. We have enough material to do a record right now. So that was just speculation, whoever wrote that. So for the people that have missed your show a couple of weeks ago uh, here in town, there, there, there is new material on the show as well as the old hits? Oh, yeah. We're playing half and half right now. We're playing uh, half of our oldies but moldies. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, half new stuff. So. No offense to the new guys here, but were Frankie Benali and uh, Rudy Sarzo approached also to join the new Quiet Riot again? Uh, they joined the Navy. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> talking about touring now, something like this Quiet Riot coming back, usually. Okay. I'll answer that. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. No. Okay. Tour touring. Usually when something like this happens, Quiet Riot is back after so many years. Uh, it's usually splashed all over the media and the rock magazines first, but I haven't seen hardly anything about you guys, and yeah. usually this kind of you know, show would happen in New York or L.A. Why, why Canada or why Winnipeg now? Well, well basically, this is just, uh, we, we have, we're unsigned, so it's hard to get all that press with no record out, you know, so we're pretty much riding what we did in the past, and uh, basically just doing a club tour to let people know we're back together and try out our new songs, see how they go over, or what songs we want to put on the record, that type of thing, you know, kind of experimental type deal. See how much we like Bobby, see if you want to get rid of him or not. <laughs> Any idea at all when uh, a record might come out, ballpark? Uh, we're ready right now, you know. It's a matter of all the legality crap of it, you know. And, you know, we, we can put an album out in a couple of weeks probably, you know. Okay, one last question, and uh, you don't have to comment on this if you don't want to, but just want to get your view on it. What do you think of uh, your former manager, Spencer Proffer, and he's gotten involved uh, with something r with Roseanne and Tom Arnold or something? He, he, was, he was not our manager, and the only thing he got involved with him was they destroyed his house. <laughs> Because the story was that, that he apparently made up the story to sell to the tabloids. I thought, well, without Quiet Riot, maybe yeah. he needs money or something. He, he was our producer. He wasn't our manager. And uh, we, we really have nothing to do with the guy anymore. You know, he's got his own thing. We've got our own thing now. So. Okay, great. Well, you're starting something new, and hopefully uh, the fans will love it, and you'll sell bucket loads of records. And uh, now for all the people watching Hard Rock Heroes, we're going to see a little taste of you guys in concert. So let's go back to uh, Tuesday, June 9th, a couple weeks ago, and uh, check out a few seconds of how these guys looked in concert right here on Winnipeg's only Hard Rock TV show, Hard Rock Heroes. Take a
Boy, those uh, two new guys look uh, a lot more like uh, the old Rudy Sarzo and Frankie Benali than Carlos Cavasso. It looks like Carlos Cavasso. How about that? Uh, now to recap on that, of course, Frankie Benali is still with Wasp. That's why he's not in the band. And uh, Rudy Sarzo, once David Coverdale dissolved Whitesnake to go into hiding because he and his wife, Tawny Kittane, were having problems with their marriage. And then Jimmy Page picked up David Coverdale. And now in their Vancouver, they're in Vancouver recording an album. At that time, that's when Rudy Sarzo started his own band uh, called Sun King. And I didn't know there was any kind of feud, but maybe apparently there is. Also, I don't know what's happening with the microphone. And I, I kind of think when, when, the, uh, when someone knocks the camera, the microphone kind of goes out for a second. So I'm going to recap that Spencer Proffer thing. Spencer Proffer produced... Uh, gee, I forgot to look, but uh, at least the first two of their records, if not all their records, and uh, apparently he concocted a story to sell to the tabloids that Roseanne and Tom Arnold had wrecked his house, which was completely untrue, and Roseanne and Tom Arnold were going to sue the tabloids, but they dropped the suit when they found out that Spencer Proffer was doing this, and it, like I said in the interview, uh, he doesn't have quiet ride anymore, so uh, maybe he needs the money, and he, didn't, he sure didn't make any money on street art, although he should have, but uh, that's another story. Uh... Low attendance, not a whole lot of people at that Quiet Riot show. Who knows, uh, could be the economy, maybe everyone's just broke. Uh, like, even if people thought they were washed up, you'd think there's some kind of nostalgia thing there. Uh, I kind of think it may be due to something like this. Quiet Riot was popular around, say, 1983, 1984, 1985. Now, I'm, like, almost 30 years old, so uh, you look at bands from the 70s, like Cheap Trick, Heart, Kiss, Aerosmith, uh, Ted Nugent. None of those groups, none of those rock acts were really big around 1980, 81, 82, 83. They all kind of had a big resurgence in 84, 85, 86. And perhaps it's because, uh, you know, people who think they are mature, they think, ah, oh, quiet, right, I used to listen to them in junior high school, man, I don't want to go see them. Well, once those people, you know, maybe get a bit older and they figure out what maturity really is, then maybe they'll think, oh, quiet, right, they were, they were kind of pretty good. The way, the way people of my generation are starting to like the village people again. They're going to all these uh, neon nights and stuff at all these bars, and they're listening to village people. YMCA, and they're listening to all the hard rock bands of the 70s. Maybe we have to get into like 1995 before people will appreciate uh, Quiet Riot again. That, that's just a theory.